Hello comrades, Dr. Poplov here and a lot of people have been requesting this video, so here it is, let's do it, let's get good, let's get bad, let's get ugly, and I think in order to talk about the whole hashtag fix FIFA idea, we need some context first, we need some background, so if you're new to FIFA, or if you're just looking at this from the outside, this hashtag or movement, whatever you want to call it, it comes from years of feeling neglected as a community by EA, and it comes from feelings towards the game, and... Whether these feelings are warranted or not, we'll explore that today, we'll present both sides, we'll, we'll look at the bigger picture. But with the recent success, but maybe not so success, but kind of maybe success of the Star Wars Battlefront 2 backlash, the hardcore FIFA community is trying to unite kind of for the first time in order to be catered to, in order to have its voice heard, to make significant changes on the game. Ultimately though, in my opinion, this is of course my opinion, I think that in the past, historically speaking, the FIFA community has been bad at explaining what he wants as a group because it's been so scattered. And I think in the past EA has been focused, and the present I guess, way too much on profits and kind of ignoring some of its player base. So I think now is a great time for everyone to come together. We've all made mistakes in the past, so let's fix that. Let's put aside our egos and unite, because EA's goals and the community's goals actually end up being aligned in the end. It's in their best interest to have the best product possible so they can make the most money possible and it's in your best interest as a player to have the best product because you have a lot of fun or you'll make it into the pro scene or whatever it is anyway believe it or not the goals are aligned we'll explore that more as we talk about this so this this video is kind of like a podcast almost it takes a look at the history and the present of what you call fix fifa now and uh it also offers a general picture of what fix fifa wants and you'll have to put in your own desires and wants in the comments as well, and I also provide some solutions in the end as well. So of course the first thing we need to address is the big elephant that's always in the FIFA room, it's the history of momentum and emotions. So, momentum used to be an actual mechanic in old FIFA games. This is not conspiracy, this is not, you know, making things up, it was something that was just a part of the game. You even had it on the HUD in the top left uh, where the scoreboard is, it showed you little bars about how the teams are doing, okay? So this was a part of a game. And then emotions were introduced in FIFA a long time ago as well, and as far as we know it's kind of murky what they do, but you know, I've included a link to a paper in the description of the video in the top comment that shows it's written by an EA employee. It shows very specifically that it is not the AI trying to dictate, you know, the outcome of a match. The paper very specifically states that it is not a system that changes attributes. However, at the same time, the paper states that it has impact on gameplay modifiers. So, does the writer mean a gameplay modifier is something like crowds chanting or an audio cue, or does it mean something else? The paper makes it sound like it's not gameplay related, but then it uses the terminology for gameplay. So already, if we're on our first point, it already starting to get confusing, so you can kind of get the idea of how confusing this has all been, and how mismanaged the communication has all been over the years. But uh, EA has gone on record several times to deny momentum in the current era of FIFA, so the recent games. And they deny momentum as recently as the press cycle for FIFA 18, so around D3, around June, July, uh, you know, you have you have interviews with producers that very specifically say there is no momentum, but then they also say there are dramatic moments in the game, are dramatic moments something that are gameplay related, are dramatic moments just something kind of a, a branch terminology that you use for what happens in the game. I don't know, it's all very murky, and this is one of the things that fix FIFA wants to talk about. This is one of the things that the community wants transparency about. So look, you can believe in momentum all you want. At the end of the day, the company has been denying it for years and years. And do you think it's a good idea for a massive company with all these shareholders? Do you think it's a good idea for them to lie about it? I don't think so. I don't think anybody would be bold enough to take that risk. However, of course, it's your conclusion to draw here, let's move on to other points and let's talk about the history of EA's response as well as the community. So, naturally FIFA is one of the most popular games on the planet, of course it's about football, so it has one of the biggest communities around. And as a result we've seen some really amazing characters, some hilarious, some insightful, influencers, whatever you want to call them, content creators, we've seen the likes of... We've seen the likes of Air Japes and now he got bored in Italian selling, but we've also seen the dark side, ranging from constant whining to bitching and coin selling, and to even making death threats at the developers' lives, which is not okay. And 
unfortunately that kind of dark side always tends to be shouting a little bit louder than the positive side so it kind of skews the perspective of the whole community as a whole kind of like most online video game communities because well we'll get to that in a second but anyway as a result i assume ea has had a pretty firm policy of not really engaging the community in a way that other developers might do you know they tried it with figureheads like true but uh, he got super shat on by a lot of people i mean think about it do you want to be abused on a daily basis every single time you look at your phone every single time you turn on your tablet laptop computer it's not fun, man. It's really not fun. However, also as a result, EA has done pretty much nothing to combat the spread of toxicity and conspiracy in the FIFA community, and it's reaching a boiling point. So, this is all while introducing game mechanics that encourage you to spend more money on FIFA Ultimate Team, which is such a huge point, and we'll get to it, I promise. And in fact, it's gotten so out of hand that FIFA players feel cheated constantly. You even have top 100 players and pros who believe in the whole scripting momentum handicap thing. Even on the podcast that I do with my homies, FM, <laughs> plug plug, we had hashtag Mike on recently, and he even stated publicly that he thought some of the past games had some form of handicap. It's, th it's that deep, even the pros, even the pros believe it. But of course I'm not saying that every single pro or top 100 player believes it, but I am saying that some of them definitely do and it's kind of bizarre that you have the most elite players in the game and influencers still believing this kind of thing. So all in all, EA has really failed miserably to create a relationship with the community and now everyone is suffering as a result. You might think, oh EA is not suffering, they're making money, but they will be suffering in the long term if this kind of thing continues. So. Again, you can draw your own conclusions here, but uh, you can think that EA are so profit-driven, they don't care about the community or the product at all, or you can think that the community drove them away. I think the truth is somewhere in between. Obviously, a company has to be profit-driven for it to exist, but the community's vocal toxicity has led them to be kind of closed off, which in turn gives more power to the business side of things. It's a really connected fact fest, and I think we all screw each other over, and I'm really, really sick of it. And I just want to move on and I think, you know, I want to build a better relationship between the company, between the game makers, between the community. I want us all to have a nice little power, you know, sit down by the fire, talk about our feelings. <laughs> and uh, I laugh now, but uh, it's gotten bad over the years, man. Like, never forget about what people called chemistry gate, chem gate. Uh, we, were, we were royally getting screwed over for a long period of time by the game's mechanics, by the game's chemistry system. It wasn't functioning how it was supposed to. And then the EA's response to all of that was honestly just a slap in the face to everybody. They just kind of tucked it under the carpet, you know. Uh, it wasn't good. You have to be honest here. It was really bad. But at the same time, a big company can't go out and say, Hey guys, we fucked up really badly. Nah, it would crash their stock. And we've seen that happen with Battlefront 2. Even though Battlefront 2 is still selling okay. Maybe not as well as they hoped, but the, the stock does get affected at the end of the day. Anyway, it was a problem that shouldn't have existed to begin with in terms of chemistry and obviously it doesn't exactly build trust with the community and that's why we have seen the type of response from the community and the type of lack of response or whatever you want to call it from EA. So I think now we have to start getting a little bit ugly and we have to talk about the sobering reality of food's existence and the way we think about FIFA's most popular mode is often very different than the way EA looks at it, I assume. So let's build a better understanding before we proceed further and I, the truth is, look, FIFA Ultimate Team can exist completely without gameplay related microtransactions. Think about that for a moment. How does that make you feel? Do you think it's possible? Do you care? Are you angry? Are you happy? Or are you unsure? Well, it is entirely possible. I've even gone as far as to write a 50 plus page, maybe 60, whatever it was, design document to clean, completely redesign it to make it more fun and make it more profitable. Uh, I'm not like an expert of anything, I've only done some small games in the past, but it, if I can do it, you know, the wizards at EA can do it. So if you're reading this, I should say if you're watching this, you're probably younger, uh, you know, FIFA tends to skew towards a younger demographic, so you might not know, but video games didn't always used to be microtransaction heavy, okay? They used to be about providing as much value to the customer so that you make lifelong fans that purchase all of your expensive video games down the road when they come out, maybe even get some pre-orders. But since the era of the 360 and PS3, we've seen a shift towards downloadable content and microtransactions, and it's been getting very, very extreme, 
Some games even lock their true endings behind paid DLC. I'm looking at you, Prince of Persia Reboot. I'm looking at you, Asura's Wrath, if I'm remembering correctly. But it's pretty messed up, right? Anyway, this business model is evolving into quote-unquote games as a service model in which developers and publishers, they kind of make something that keeps you hooked and keeps you spending a long time playing so that you might you might be more inclined to spend some more money on it all throughout a year or two or even three. You can think of it as having roots in the old arcade business model, you know. You walk up to an arcade game, it has punishing brutal difficulty so that you die a lot, but you want to keep going, so you put in 25 cents every time, and you want to keep going, don't you? Huh? 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 There are many places to learn about, you know, how games are becoming casinos and how they psychologically manipulate you for the better and worse, I should point out. And uh, if you want to check out kind of a starting point, I recommend just going on YouTube and typing in uh, Danny O'Dwyer, The Point Destiny, and I'll link that in the description as well. So Danny O'Dwyer, The Point Destiny, it's a video where he analyzes how the psychological hooks in video games kind of keep you manipulated. But anyway, the thing about the service-based model is it won't work long-term if there isn't enough to hook the player. So how do you hook people in foot? Or fat, as you should officially say, I guess. But anyway, it's packs, it's SPCs, squad battles, weekend league, rewards. Let's look at this, okay? So squad building challenges, they can be fun, but they exist to maintain prices on the market. They are a way of controlling the economy by EA. Pack openings can be fun. Of course, everyone likes a good pack opening. Even if you say fuck packs, come on, man. We know deep down that you get excited when you get a good pack. Come on now, don't lie. Uh, but packs obviously exist to take your money directly. Anyway, food champions in the weekend league can be fun, but it exists to wear you down into buying packs. Think about it, man. 40 matches in 3 days. That's crazy. That's crazy talk. And of course, squad battles can be fun, but they have the same effect as the weekend league. Trading on the market can be fun, but EA takes a cut of everything in order to keep the market in check. Think about that, EA takes a cut of virtual currency. And of course, special cards like Informs, Record Breakers, etc. They're fine then, for some people they're kind of the whole point of the game, but the progression system is insane, okay? It takes so fucking long. Everything in foot is carefully designed to encourage pack buying behavior. Even the fancy pack opening animations, they exist to massage the pleasure center of your brain. And the fact that you get so few coins forces you to either play the game for an insane and unhealthy amount of time, or to simply buy FIFA points. And chances are, if you are spending a huge amount of time on the game, you're probably likely to spend some money on it. Now, I get it, I get it completely. Like, let's say you have, like, knock on wood, a nice job like me, your time is limited like me, you love the game. What's the harm in dropping a hundred bucks here and there every now and then? You can afford it, you don't feel guilty about it, it's within your budget, and you're having a good time. Well, if lots of people do that, that tells EA that the game is balanced properly. People keep playing and paying, so what's the problem, right? EA looks at the numbers, EA sees that foot makes a billion dollars or whatever it is, and they're like, oh, okay, well the progression system is perfectly fine, no need to change it. FIFA Ultimate Team exists to give you your dream dream, but it also exists to take as much money from you as possible. And in order for the food to work in the long term future, there needs to be a balance between the two. Or the money aspect of it can be tied to gameplay, but that's a whole other story. Uh, and obviously the game needs to be superb to begin with. And of course someone at EA could say, oh, but we need to pay for server costs, or give some other reason that the money benefits the product. And there's definitely a little bit of truth to that. If the series can make crazy money, it can afford massive upgrades and improvements. But here is where the next point comes in, and that's despite new features and upgrades, old ghosts are still haunting FIFA's gameplay. I've been playing the series seriously since 06, I've invested thousands of hours, I don't even want to think, but it might be over 10,000 hours, probably more, who knows. Uh, and I've been playing casually since before 06 as well, back, you know, when I was playing winning 11 and Pez. And to this date, I can tell you only six things that have truly changed the flow of matches. So six things since the year 2005, FIFA 06. Number one, the ability to move 360 degrees as opposed to just 64 or less directions with your player changed the game. I think this was introduced, if I'm remembering right, uh, I think it was FIFA 10? Maybe 09 or 08? I think it was FIFA 10. But anyway, let's move on. 
Next point is body physics, so that you can have proper collisions and whatnot. Of course, removing the ball from the player's feet, making it a physical object. And uh, players not getting stuck on rails was another big one. And uh, this means that they don't get stuck on a loop that you can't break with user input, so they get stuck running a certain path or something like this. And this still happens sometimes, but it's rare. And it's video games, you kind of ultimately can't prevent that. Uh, maybe not with the current technology, but something for the future for sure. Um, next point is the unrealistic L2 R2 crab walk dribbling that was super abused in the years past. Uh, FIFA 18 kind of got rid of it finally. And of course, you gotta talk about the right stick. My fifth point is. You know, it wasn't always there. Many of you might not remember, but can you believe it? Think about FIFA without having the right stick, how it currently behaves. And of course, the final point, tactical defending for better and worse. So these are all key changes that have changed the flow of gameplay. However, these are all key gameplay changes that have been trickled out since 2005, man. Or 07 or whenever it was that they started getting serious. It might have been 07, I can't even remember at this point. But it's been basically a decade. And in this decade, we've only had six major advances. Now, I know, okay, I know there have been many other new features. Dozens, hundreds of improvements, maybe even thousands. But at the end of the day, if you take a look at my... FIFA 13 goals or FIFA 14 goals, look past the arcade graphics at this point and you will see that the gameplay is pretty much the same. The outcomes are the same. Football is football. You can't change that much about it at the end of the day. All you can do is provide an amazing gameplay experience that kind of continues to iterate regularly, regularly as the technology allows it. So FIFA's gameplay has not kept up. In the past years, PES has been making huge changes to their game in order to get back the market share they lost to FIFA. If you remember in the old days, PES was the super sim game and FIFA was kind of a joke gameplay-wise. Like, yeah, people loved FIFA, obviously, but in the old days, if you were serious about football, you were playing PES or winning 11. But like I said, starting with 06, 07, you know... EA really put effort into their gameplay. I remember David Ratter talking about how he loved PES so much and how he, you know, wanted to bring in a more simulation experience to FIFA. And by FIFA 10, hands down, FIFA was the undisputed king of football in terms of gameplay. But, you know, since this era, FIFA has had the exact same glitches and problems for many years. And it's been across, I think, three or four different gameplay engines. That makes no sense. Uh, for example, I've linked the uh, the text version to this kind of video podcast, whatever you want to call it. In there, you will find links to all sorts of broken gameplay. And uh, many of them, pardon me, I'm losing my voice. Many of them have been included in this video. Players should not be able to teleport or break their limbs at will, you know. Kickoff goals are still a regular occurrence. The list goes on. I even made a sarcastic video about it not too long ago. But uh, some of the most frustrating and recurring FIFA glitches are... The ball changing its flight path for no reason on its own, player appendages and limbs warping in order to score, let the ball in, attackers, you know, being able to score through their own bodies or through the bodies of other players, or the ball incorrectly changing its movement after interacting with a goalkeeper, goalkeepers being incapable of making the most basic saves because they often lose track of the ball. An example of this is when the ball is in front of the goalkeeper, but he just stands in place and doesn't pick it up. And then the AI, you know, or the attacking player scores. Um, of course, the AI's inability to defend kickoff resulting in kickoff goals being the easiest way to come back into a match. That's a huge fucking problem. And people have also brought up that the passing assist is way too generous, resulting in easy ping pong passing. Despite all the patches, none of that matters too much because you can just ping pong so easily. The state of the gameplay results in 4 one 2 one 2 narrow being the most viable formation. Think about that. A narrow formation. The most viable thing in a football representation? That's lunacy. That's crazy talk. In real life, it's such a difficult formation to play. It's narrow. It doesn't lend itself well against most other formations. Whether you want FIFA to be a sim or to be arcadey, it's ridiculous that the number one formation is so uncommon in the real sport. Counter-attacking and ping-pong passing has been in the FIFA meta for many years now, with maybe FIFA 16 being the exception where it was more about skill moves. Maybe, maybe, it depends on your opinion of it. Uh, there was one year that had crossing that was uh, legitimately too strong, I forget which year it was, maybe FIFA 14. Uh, but that ties into counter-attacking, you know, you just run it out the fucking wing, cross the ball and score the easy goal. So what is FIFA trying to emulate on the pitch? Is it creating its own brand of football? 
If that's the case, then players should be given more strategic options. Players are fucking tired of the exact same meta and the exact same glitches. And don't even get me started about the AI defending. Oh my goodness, last year was the critical point for that. So now let's move on to the rise of esports and how it affects FIFA. And part of the hashtag FixFIFA movement is about how the majority of the game is neglected due to Ultimate Team and the fact that there are so many problems with Foot Champions and Weekend League. One thing I don't quite get. Each major part of FIFA is worked on by a separate team. EA has insane money, we know they have the money to make this game, that's not a problem for them. So, shouldn't we see big updates every year to every mode? Why has career mode been stagnant for years? Why is the gameplay in the journey just virtual pro, pro gameplay retooled a little bit? And, in my opinion, super boring, but that's neither here nor there. But why do non-foot mode, why do non-foot modes get no love at all? I get that foot is the main cash cow, but all this is demonstrating is that foot might as well be its own game. I wouldn't be shocked if in the future it was, you know? FIFA could be something else and foot could be something else, I don't know. Anyway, EA has been pushing to make FIFA a big competitive esport. This isn't new, FIFA has always had a pro scene, but uh, in the past two years EA is really, really trying to hook more people into it, more of the casual players. The thing is, the competitive scene is tied to a game mode that is designed to get the most money out of you. And for many people, the service change on an hourly basis. If you're not in Central or Northwestern Europe, your gameplay changes often, okay? Even matches from Toronto, where I'm playing out of, uh, you know, it, it's not always going to be five bars. In fact, it's rarely going to be five bars. And EA's matchmaking, for some reason, thinks it's okay to match Toronto with Brazil. For reference, the distance from Toronto to many parts of Brazil is similar as the distance from Toronto to England. So you're going to get that lag if you get matched like that. That's crazy talk. So anyway, if you're not in Germany, if you're not in England, you often run the risk of having a horrible gameplay environment. And this affects thousands, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. You have an esports uh, scene tied to who can spend the most money and still be decent. And you have a top 100 team that exploits matchmaking. If you go watch top 100 streams or check out their uh, check out what's it, what's it called, check out the champions channel replays or even on the top 100 leaderboards you can see some of the replays. Uh, almost no top player plays away matches. As a result, the best players never actually play against each other. They noob slay, and for some reason, matchmaking will often give them gold one and silver players to noob slay. So. It's not really a fair playing ground if the best players are not playing each other. You have so many 14-0s this year and people look at that and go, Oh man, look at this big, big skill gap. But is it really a skill gap? It's just a race to see which good player can destroy the most bad players. That's not really a skill gap. How about we put together a good player versus a good player on a consistent basis? At its core, the Fix FIFA movement wants good gameplay and you can't... You can't have that insane delay, you can't have that, you know, exploitative progression system, and you can't have an esports scene that's tied to buying packs. And of course, nobody is forcing you to buy packs, it's your choice, but is the game encouraging you to buy packs? Is it designed for you to want to buy packs? Yes, yes it is. Is the game designed for you to be exploited if you have addictive tendencies? Hmm, that's something to think about, but esports and FIFA... It's kind of, it's a weird mixture. You can't have esports tied to who can spend the most money and you need to have a pro scene, okay? You need to look at a ladder system, a ranking system, something that League of Legends does, Counter-Strike, Dota, all these games. You can't have pros not playing each other. That's just a joke. Let's move on to a myth, okay? A lot of people in the community say, oh yeah, it doesn't listen. Well, fact. They do. EA listens to you, and 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 to everybody, okay? EA is listening to everyone at all times, it's what big companies do. I work in digital marketing, I know how much user data you can collect on anyone, it's easy, it's outrageous. And keep in mind that everything you do in the game is tracked anyway, so EA has all of the behavioral data in the world. In fact, EA is so in touch that they once told me to not post a glitch video I was going to do. It was a game-breaking bug and I was going to post how to not get ruined by it, but instead they made it very clear to me that it's a risk to post that and a violation of the terms of service, since technically it would show what the glitch is. So, same thing has happened to other content creators as well. Uh, 
it is what it is and you know we've had ea devs tweet out threads of mine in the past on reddit we've had ea devs literally tweet out that they read reddit and other communities so they're listening every day the devs are powerless to comment because they can lose their jobs if they do if they say the wrong thing or even if they say the right thing they can still lose their jobs let's be realistic here uh the marketing and social media teams collect as much data as possible because it's their job to do so a company like EA is listening at all times. And that's why this hashtag fix FIFA thing could be so great. You know, never has the community been so united in one spot centrally. Uh, never really has uh, never really has the community voiced their criticism in such a respectful manner like this. And of course, of course, of course, we still have the bad apples like every other community. But there really is a push for a big change right now. Someone here has to be the bigger person and of course it's not going to be the company because the company has to change when they see their profits going down. So it's, the onus falls on the community kind of and it's not going to be, you know, a social media entry level person at EA making $42,000 a year. It has to be the community and the key decision makers at EA. So it has to start with the community. However, something most people missed about the whole Battlefront 2 debacle is something that's been plaguing all of gaming now. EA didn't actually fix the problems that people have with Battlefront. They just turned off my <laughs> microtransactions. A lot of games now launch without them to avoid backlash to help inflate the review scores, generate positive sentiment online, and then, you know, they turn them on later. This is a new, even the new Call of Duty does this. And this is what's happening to Battlefront. It's, in my opinion, a hugely unethical practice. Just like when Konami patched Metal Gear Solid 5 to be way more of a grind in order to encourage microtransactional behavior and that's just not okay in my opinion. You have to remember that the business people running EA and all these companies, they do it to make a massive profit. You can't fault somebody for wanting to get rich, but you can fault them if they're doing it by ruining something good and by exploiting people. I think this business practice is pretty disgusting and uh, it's, you know, it's bad already that AAA gaming is becoming a casino. We don't need an extra layer of bullshit on top of that. But like I said before, now is the chance to make a difference with the community... With the community caring in the way that it does in an unprecedented manner. And with EA stock taking a hit from the Battlefront news, now is the best time for all of us to, like I said, put our egos aside and try to make a difference. So let's talk about what hashtag fix FIFA actually wants and of course add your desires and wants in the comments and please, 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 please be respectful. Let's talk about some of the things we want, okay? Fix the truly game-breaking glitches that have plagued FIFA for years. You know, we know, we know, we know EA has seen all of them. You know, they know everything from kickoff goals to animation warping to players teleporting to all of these crazy bugs. EA, if you're watching this or rather when you're watching this, if for whatever reason you're uncertain about, uh, you know, how to find these glitches, just go on Reddit, go on YouTube, go on your own forums and type in EA AIDS or E AIDS and you will find so many, so many videos and glitches. And although the sentiment from the users might be extremely negative and toxic, if you actually pay attention to the footage, you will see the glitches at hand. And I'm sure they've already done this many, many times and they continue to do so. And I know for a fact that other content creators and influencers have sent them glitch videos and some things have even gotten patched in the past. Now, we need to see a fix to the stability of the game server because the best gameplay experience needs to be provided to as many people as possible. Yes, networking is extremely difficult, especially, especially when you factor in crappy ass Wi-Fi. But the fact that you can have a gigabit connection and never see five bars in a competitive mode that has dedicated servers is not okay, okay? That pisses me off. So much of my gameplay is dependent on just luck, basically. Like, how am I going to adapt to the lag, input lag in this match versus how is the opponent going to adapt it? It's crazy, man. You can't have competition around that. And I understand that networking is a huge pain, but... One solution to that is to come up with a better matchmaking system and to, I guess, seemingly add more servers. I can't actually know for sure, uh, but all I can speak of is my experience and other people's experiences. And we know for a fact, okay, last year, for example, there were no pros from Spain or anything like that because they had the worst delay in Europe. And you see Germany, you know, dominating the current FIFA meta because there is a server in, I think it was Frankfurt. I think other pros have said that. I'm not 100% sure, but we know there is a server in Central Europe. 
Anyway, next up, the next desire from the fixed FIFA movement. Communicate with the community clearly through key figures, whether it's influencers, right, whether it's YouTubers or designated community managers. These people are bound to take a lot of abuse, but that honestly comes with the job. That's the sad truth of it. So hire somebody who can take all of that abuse and still be a professional. It's not an easy job. It's a thankless job, but ultimately it's extremely important and pretty much all major games have visible figures that the community can turn to. Sometimes just saying that you've heard the problem is enough, okay? And on that note, people want detailed patch notes, kind of like how Blizzard or Valve will do it. There have been many instances in which there is a patch that changes something that wasn't documented and the, and then the community finds out about it later and of course gets pissed off because why aren't you documenting these changes? Were they intended? Were they unintended? Who knows? But this stuff, you know, you really need to do a better job of documenting gameplay changes. Next up, the movement wants a skill-driven matchmaking system, okay, and blind selections, so you don't know whether you're playing home or away, and maybe even a designated stadium or consistency between camera angles so that people can complain about different stadiums, but there needs to be skill-based matchmaking. I'm sure there is currently a skill system, but it's currently broken because the best players never play away matches and never play against each other, okay? It's broken, straight up. Next up. The community wants the Weekend League, or at least the hardcore community wants the Weekend League to be extended to be the Week League. Or you need to come up with a better persistent system that doesn't literally take away entire weekends from players. And I know a lot of top 100 players will say the Weekend League is fine. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if I was the best player in the world too, I would say it's fine as well. Not having to play any other of the best players in the world. It's, it's kind of like a... You kind of... You kind of got to turn to the rest of the community for that one, you know? Anybody that's in the top 100 regularly, regularly and says it's fine, kind of, you know, has a conflict of interest. Now, another thing the community wants is for EA to publish back odds. I know this is so unrealistic, but with China already making a law about this, you can bet your ass we'll see laws about this in the future as games become more like casinos and... Uh, People just want the food progression to be redesigned to be a little bit more realistic, okay? We don't all have thousands of hours to build our ultimate team. And if this is going to be the main mode that you want us to play, come on, man. You can't expect people to put in that much time and money. They're going to burn out. This is not a long-term plan. And of course, the movement, the fixed FIFA movement, finds other updates to the game in meaningful ways. So, I should say to other parts of the game, rather. So... Negotiation cutscenes in career mode, it's not a meaningful upgrade, okay? It's it's uh, it's window dressing. Part of why foot is number one is because of its design, and if other modes saw some design love as well, you might see them played more often. And of course, you can always monetize other modes through non-gameplay related microtransactions like vanity items, whatever, whatever. And for the love of God, <laughs> make sure that the ref is not wearing the same colored kit as one of the teams. Look, the reality is we know none of these changes can be made overnight. We know that game development is extremely difficult and takes a very long time. No reasonable person explain, expects these changes to be done in the next FIFA. But we need to see some progress. We need to see these issues getting addressed. We need to see the work getting started. Right now, we see nothing, okay? Literally nothing. The closest we ever come to is Rob Hodgson or Hodgson, I forget his last name, I'm sorry, tweeting about how maybe they'll fix kickoff goals. And I understand his sentiment. His sentiment was that, yeah, we're looking into it. But the way it was delivered was just a slap in the face to the FIFA community. It specifically said in his tweet, no promises though. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Clearly, like a PR person did not look at this comment. You have the company, right? A man from the company telling you there are no promises. We are going to fix a problem that the community is having. You can't say that. That angers the community, okay? Again, I understand the sentiment by Rob. Rob was trying to say, we are looking into it. But the way it was delivered was, oh, no promises, though. You can see how the community would react negative, negatively to that. Uh, but let's move on, okay? Let's move on to uh, the ugly solution. If EA is going to continue to make foot more about money, the player base will drop off. We've seen this in all service-based games over time. It's not sustainable. The business decision makers will then look to new ways of getting more players and building goodwill. So, 
You can let this happen naturally. I, like I said, it happens to every service-based game. Who knows how many years it will take. It might take 3, it might take 10. I have no idea. Or you can be more active. The thing is, in order to be active, in order to be actually heard by the people that make these decisions, you have to stop playing the game. <laughs> and let's be realistic here, many of you watching this video are not going to just stop playing the game, especially after you invest a lot of money into it and time. But by not engaging with it, by not buying packs, you are communicating everything we just talked about in a business manner to the people looking at the numbers and making these decisions. So the question becomes, are there enough people out there in the community that will legitimately stop playing for a period of time in order to make a difference, kind of like a blackout protest? Are you prepared to miss out on multiple weekend links? Are you prepared to stop buying packs? If you are, let me know in the comments. I honestly would love to hear from you. If you're not, I would also love to hear from you. Perhaps the FIFA blackout protests are something that's going to be required in the future to be heard. Perhaps it needs to be organized. Again, you know, give your thoughts in the comments below. This might be something we do in the future. I I don't know. I I'm my kind of initial gut feeling is that. All of these things have failed in the past, so I don't see it working in the future as well. Uh, but like I said, this really is the best time to try this again. And I really think we are on the cusp of something big here. So if you really are down for something like this, if you will truly, truly, truly stop playing FIFA on the weekend leagues for a period of time and not buy packs and make the numbers drop, you know, let your voice be heard, but please be respectful. We're all human beings here. And speaking of other human beings, I'm also here to call out bullshit YouTubers, okay? You know who you are. I get that many of the big YouTubers literally make money because of FIFA. It's their livelihood. So it would be stupid of them to go against uh, EA, right? Well, that's the thing. You're not really going against EA if you offer your genuine thoughts on the game and are constructive and respectful. You're not going to get into any kind of trouble if, if you see a glitch and you call it out and you're respectful and you send it off to EA and you're like, hey guys, I found this glitch, you know, hopefully it can get addressed. Nobody is going to get punished. You're not going to get banned from the Game Changes event. You're not going to get blacklisted. Come on, man. Grow a pair. This is an opportunity to fix so many mistakes that have plagued the community side and the EA side. And, you know, YouTubers had to put aside their fragile YouTube egos. Let's be real here. You guys, you guys being the YouTubers, have, have a huge role in shaping what the community is. And you guys have done everything from fake pack openings to fake leaks to spending tens of thousands of dollars to give unrealistic expectations and even lying about good custom tactics. Come on, you are part of the goddamn problem. You're the reason everyone has to type in all caps in order to get noticed on YouTube. And the FIFA online audience tends to skew towards the younger demographic, they're highly impressionable, you rub off on them. And all of your toxicity, all of your negativity, all of your bullshit spreads to the community as well. I know many YouTubers that watch this video will get pissed off by what I just said, but it's the fucking truth. You guys in the comments, you guys watching, you know who the YouTubers are versus the content creators. You know who is out there actually passionate and caring about FIFA versus who is out there to just make money off of it. And I think this is everybody's chance to build towards something greater and still make as much money as you already do. Hell man, if you build a long-standing FIFA community, if you grow up with them, you will even make more money than you already have because you won't have people aging out and realizing that your fucking dumbass catchphrases were never cool to begin with, okay? YouTubers in the FIFA space really, really need to grow up. All you have to do is stop pretending that EA is the greatest thing ever and stop pretending that FIFA is perfect. If you see a glitch or something, just speak up. You won't get in trouble and your community will care. If you are respectful, that will get passed on. And the same goes to, towards the pro players that are popular. I can't, I almost can't fault them for playing home games only because the system allows for it. And let's be real, if you were a top player, you would also do that as well, but... If these people are so worried about their precious skill, you're gonna get exposed eventually anyway. Plenty of, pro plenty of pros have been shown over the years to simply not be as good as their leaderboards and videos suggest, and some influencers have even admitted to paying other people to play the game for them. <laughs> we must stop the toxicity. 
As long as we're collectively a bunch of cunts complaining about momentum and buying packs, EA will not care. We can't just go out there and harass developers or make really shitty memes that aren't even funny about the state of the game. This gets us nowhere, this makes EA see us as crying babies, and you know, if you have actual feedback, you must present it in a respectful and constructive fashion. If you see a glitch, you can't say, fuck EA, bullshit AIDS, oh my god. It's better to just tag a dev on Twitter or post on Reddit or some forums elsewhere and, and be like, hey guys, it is a glitch I found, hopefully you guys can fix it. Again, this goes back to YouTubers. They often breed a cult culture of immaturity, immaturity and instant gratification. Hell man, some of them even use homophobic slurs and still appear on EA programming. Are you fucking kidding me? If EA isn't going to be the difference maker here, the onus falls on the community. Somebody has to be the big bigger person here. I know I've said this many times, but honestly, it's the truth. Somebody needs to be the bigger person here. So my final message to EA, okay? We all know you're reading this or watching this. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes as I say this and they say reading. Uh, we all know you're watching this, so we know that developers want to make the best game they can. And we know that business decisions are not made by the developers. You are going to see people drop off your game at some point in the near future as you burn out your fans financially and psychologically. And by then, it will be too late to pivot and you'll have to go through the same cycle again. You might be riding the wave of... Uh, all this data we can collect from users, we're in this crazy new digital age where nothing is private, right? You might think that's enough for you to be set for life, but it's not. Look at any other service-based product, it goes through cycles. What you're doing now is not a long-term strategy, you know, you gotta fix the game's issues and be more transparent with us. In return, you'll have a healthy, much less toxic relationship with the community, and you will make way more money in the long term, everybody wins, the fans will love you. You need to consider redesigning foot before you burn out your players. Maybe even consider microtransactions that are based on vanity items instead of gameplay. Also, if anybody watching this EA or community wants to see my big ass redesign document, let me know. I can make it a bit more readable and publish it. I'm not worried about my ideas being stolen. Everyone has a bunch of ideas. Plus, it's not like I work for EA or anything. I just want a great game and a fun community. That's the main reason why I got into FIFA and content creation to begin with. So, comrades... Let's end it here. Thank you so much for staying through for this long ass video. I really appreciate it. We ran out of footage a long time ago and uh, it is what it is. Again, let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know your desires. If you're really actually willing to not play FIFA, to protest or any other suggestions or ideas you might have. Now is the time to post comments. Now is the time to let your voice be heard. But please, please, please. And I know this won't... This won't necessarily work on everyone, but please, please be respectful. No one is going to take us seriously if you're just a bunch of cuts. So on that note, comrades, stay beautiful, stupid catchphrase. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time.